Hey Summoners, and welcome back to another Pro Player Analysis video. Today, we're going to be looking at how Dopa uses his superior wave management skills to win all of his solo queue games. We're always looking to improve our videos, so feel free to leave any comments, feedback, or suggestions down below. Before we get started, make sure you check out ProGuides.com if you want to see massive increases in your rank this season. ProGuides has the best courses to help you improve that were made by your favorite pro players such as Nightblue, Hi, and Mike Young. Now, let's jump into the video. In our last pro player analysis video, we mentioned that matchup knowledge is one of the most important reasons that TF Blade was able to hit rank 1 on two different servers, NA and EU. Matchup knowledge manifests itself differently between each player. Dopa uses it to create goals and then achieves those goals through good wave management. As a disclaimer, everything that Dopa does in this game is in some way a direct result of his excellent wave management capabilities. First, let's break down the Aatrox vs Akali matchup. While it favors Aatrox, this matchup is determined by spacing, landing skill shots, and minion waves. Both champions have the sustain, wave clear, and kill potential to punish mistakes made by the other player. Aatrox's goal is to gain control of the wave and then zone off Akali. If she moves up, Aatrox can look to trade aggressively by landing Qs and then getting a health advantage. With that said health advantage, Aatrox has kill and lane priority versus Akali, opening up for solo kills, tower dives, or roams. Another important thing for Aatrox is that he's stronger in skirmishes and teamfights. If he's able to push the wave, he then wants to be able to prioritize vision control, that way he can set up counter ganks for his own jungler, and then win lane off of a good 2v2 skirmish. Akali's goal in lane is also to gain control of the wave. The lane is abysmal to start, but at level 6, she has the potential to turn the lane around in her favor. At level 1, her Q is significantly shorter cooldown than Aatrox's, so she can look to trade damage when Aatrox pushes, or push the lane herself by dodging Aatrox's Q and then pressuring him off the wave. If she can look to outplay the Aatrox, she can cut her losses from level 1 to 5 and look to all in at level 6. While Aatrox's goal is to gain a health advantage, Akali's goal is to trade back evenly because the fight favors her if they're both low. Now, let's get the gameplay rolling. Before the minions spawn, both teams engage in a small skirmish in the jungle. This leaves Dopa starting the lane off missing a little bit of health. To be frank, Akali should have been able to at least go even, if not win her lane from this. However, though, through great wave management and recognizing an opportunity, Dopa seizes control over the lane. When the waves meet, he notices that Akali has not shown in her lane. While she's definitely nearby, she's not sure exactly where she needs to be. She should be poking Dopa down since he's already at a health disadvantage. Instead, she's sitting in the fog of war, and Dopa punishes Akali for this immediately by pushing the wave with his Q. By doing this, his wave is now naturally set to push by itself. While Akali begins to poke with Dopa, it's already too late, and the cost of her mistakes come to fruition. In order to optimally trade back, Akali needs to walk up to Aatrox after her Q for an auto attack. This takes time, and that's time where Dopa's minions are already clearing Akali's in time where she's not able to push the wave back. Since Dopa had the initial lane push, he can look to trade back aggressively with Akali, and he has several minions that will be hitting her if she continues to fight. Akali must back off, and Dopa is able to clear the wave with his minion advantage. These kinds of plays aren't exclusive to this matchup either. There are several that are decided almost entirely on who can push and players of all levels can find leads this way. Another concept here is that shoving the lane can help mitigate health disadvantages. If you can shove the lane for free, you'll be able to build a minion wave advantage which will make trades go better in your favor. Since he's established the push, Dopa will be able to hit level 2 first and then zone Akali from the wave. His wave is already slow pushing and he has a power advantage. Akali will have to decide between an unfavorable trade to farm or give up the farm while waiting for it to crash into her turret. Dopa hits level 2 while his Q is on cooldown, so he spaces himself from Akali until it's ready and then nails a perfect trade on her. In spite of the fact that he started the lane around 200 health down, he now has found a health advantage. Healthier and his wave slow pushing, Dopa continues to pressure Akali and give her some difficulty in farming. In this situation, Akali cannot touch the wave at all without dodging Aatrox's Q, and Dopa can now slow push the wave to deny Akali any minions that she wants. When the wave is about to crash, Akali looks for some farm and poke with her Q, but gets punished. With his minion wave advantage, Dopa is able to trade freely and has enough pressure to avoid a gank. One thing that could be often overlooked is the fact that Dopa never wastes his own abilities. He's either using his abilities to push the wave, or holding onto it so he can trade correctly. When you have a power advantage because of a slow pushing wave, it's paramount that you use your auto attacks to last hit and then hold onto your abilities so you can win fights. Missing or wasting abilities creates windows for opponents to fight back, and then regain wave control when they're on cooldown. Akali ends up missing a lot of farm under her turret, and Dopa continues to abuse her with his knowledge of wave control. The wave bounces from turret, and is now closer to Akali's side of the lane. Dopa knows that this means the wave will slow push into him now, and with Akali being low, he waits for the minion waves to meet, so that way they won't target him and he walks forward. 
Since Aatrox's abilities aren't targeted, he won't draw minion aggro as long as he only casts abilities and avoids auto attacking. Here, he's actually able to walk up to the middle of Akali's minion wave and pressure her off of it. Since the wave will push to Dopa, Akali is in a situation where she can't do anything. Her only option here is to recall, but if she does, she'll lose minions because Dopa can either freeze or fast push the wave while she's gone. Akali attempts to recall twice, but Dopa stops her both times, not afraid of taking tower shot because he's already established a massive lead. Dopa then thins the wave out a little bit, that way the wave doesn't push too quickly towards him. And this is making sure that the wave is pushing into him while it's close to even as possible, that way Dopa can quickly switch to a fast push if Akali recalls. When Akali does recall, Dopa pushes the wave into turret, denying Akali the wave and again setting it up to slow push back to him. 5 minutes into the game, he has a 15 CS lead and has denied Akali several minions, the equivalent of solo killing her. Since he's returned to a lane that is now pushing towards him, Dopa knows that there's going to be a good window for his jungler to gank his own lane. Once he's arrived, Dopa lets the wave push into him, but makes an attempt to slow down the push and lengthen the window that Akali is gankable. Akali makes the right choice by playing aggressively to hard push and prevent Dopa from doing so. After clearing the minions, she looks to fight Dopa, that way he can't freeze the lane, but dies to a gank in doing so. With Akali dead, Dopa accomplishes what Akali was trying so hard to prevent. He freezes the wave. One unique thing about Dopa is how he roams. In textbook play, mid laners will roam after pushing a wave in or sacrifice a wave to look for one. But Dopa leaves lane off of his freezes. He'll be able to look at a wave and determine how much time he has to roam. Here, he leaves a lane to help Elise take Scuttlecrab, clears vision in the top jungle, and makes it back in time to catch the wave under his turret. While he lost two minions, it doesn't compare to the entire wave he denied Akali by freezing the lane. Dopa fast pushes the next wave and then recalls. Calling him good at wave management would be wrong. He is a genius. Doing this ties a succession of plays together and shows that he had it all planned out the moment Elise ganked. When he left to go help Elise ward, he had the wave frozen outside of his turret, bound to crash in about 10 seconds. Most players that they wanted to reset would have attempted to push the wave as hard as they can and then recalled. However, this would have taken more time to do and also would have kept Dopa in lane. Roaming allowed him to clear vision for Elise while she starts the scuttle crap. The seconds that he saves are potentially crucial for any jungler because it's a role that's heavily reliant on effective use of her time. It would have also been dangerous for Elise because of Kindred's uncertain location. By letting the wave crash into him, the turret helps Dopa push the wave back, that way he's able to accomplish his goal of pushing for a reset while also helping his jungler. If this video was titled the only thing you need to win in the jungle, the answer would be have Dopa as your mid laner. While Dopa is in base, Akali cleared the wave and then pulled back the next wave to make sure that it will slow push to her. Talk about masochism. Once he's back in lane, Dopa looks for free poke since his minion wave is pushing. He already has the lane priority here, so Dopa fast pushes the lane and then looks to fake a roam bottom lane. Akali ends up taking the bait and falling for his fake roam, which causes her to push the wave back to Dopa, making him miss farm for his roam. Instead, Dopa comes out of the fog of war and solo kills her. <sighs> Unlucky. From here on out, Dopa begins to fast push a lot. By crashing waves in, he's creating pressure and impacting the map by deep warding, taking scuttle crab, clearing vision, and then counter jungling. While he finally gets caught for his first death of the game, the damage Dopa has done has already set in. To kill him, the enemy team committed three members, Ash Ultimate, Rift Herald, and the top turret to kill Dopa. Definitely worth it for him, in spite of his little misplay. After the laning phase is over, his play is rather ordinary. He looks for fights he can win, otherwise cleaning up waves whatever lane he needs to be in. At this stage of the game, this is the best play because what's most important here is vision control and farm. Wave management will again become important here once Baron is on the board, but until then, he pushes side lanes and looks for wards to clear or camps to counter jungle. 19 minutes and 20 seconds into the game, Dopa again shows his massive understanding of wave management. While he heads bottom after his reset, he immediately recognizes it's already slow pushing. With Baron 40 seconds away from spawning, this is a great opportunity for him to group with his team. He finds a fight, but in the end it leads to several casualties by both teams. With the lead that he's built, though, he's able to actually start pushing a side lane and group with his team again to look for plays. By pushing and then roaming, he's able to make the game-winning rotation where his team catches Kindred and takes Baron shortly afterwards. The biggest impact Dopa had in this game was that his initial wave management created a lead not only for himself but also for his jungler. Starting with the first kill that he handed over to Elise, he was able to help himself get a tempo lead and help her get a tempo lead, counter jungle Kindred, and then give Elise the biggest lead imaginable by allowing her to take Rift Herald and top turret. Towards the end of the game, his top lane and jungle hold 18 kills, while the enemy team has 11 in total. Against high level opponents, it's not realistic to expect yourself to get a solo kill after solo kill after solo kill. Instead, Dopa was able to go for a more realistic lead by helping his jungler get ahead and take control of the game. There are plenty of details in what we covered in this video, so let's summarize them briefly. 
Understanding the little intricacies of his matchup allowed Dopa to recognize what he needed to do to recover from a little bit of a rough start. He played in a way that put himself in a position where he could use superior wave management to create leads for him and his team. After the landing phase ended though, Dopa found himself in the right place at the right time on many different occasions. While this is another skill in and of itself, having excellent wave management skills made it a bit easier to do so and also allowed him to make sure that no extra gold was lost. While it may seem that we spent a ton of time on one concept in this video, which was Dopa's wave management, understand that's because this one core element to League of Legends made it much easier to understand everything Dopa was doing in his gameplay. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, check out our channel. We also have more content on ProGuides.com where we work with our partners and pro players to help you take your game to the next level. We hope that you continue to improve by watching our videos and through ProGuides.com. Until next time, take care and good luck on the Rift.